Hi, AppSec engineers. Welcome to another video of security engineer interview questions. In this video, we'll be exploring yet another authorization flaw, which is mass assignment. Let's get started. If you like this sort of content, you should consider liking this video and subscribing to the AppSec engineer channel on YouTube. This will help notify you every single time we drop a new video on this chat. Mass assignment is an extremely potent, but not very well known security flaw. Now it comes under the category of authorization flaws. Now in this video, we're going to be starting off looking at what mass assignment is in the first place. And then we're going to be looking at a demo where we're going to actually be attacking and defending against mass assignment. So we'll see all of this happening in real time. Now, mass assignment and all of these other vulnerabilities is something that you see with a lot of web applications and especially with APIs. And this is part of our API security attack and defense course on AppSec Engineer. Now, let's look at another major attack vector in the API security space, which is also very specific to authorization. And this attack is called mass assignment. Now, this is very close to object level authorization, but it has a very different twist that kind of gives it a big elevation of privilege type of feel that we're going to be talking about. Now, this was made popular because the attack happened, or at least was first made popular because of the Ruby. But to be honest, this is available across the board. You can do this with a lot of different frameworks across Node, across Java, across ASP.NET, what have you. It doesn't only have to be Ruby, it just was made popular in Ruby on Rails, but it's actually a curse anyway. So let's talk a little bit about how this works and why it works the way it works. First of all, let's look at an example. So I'm going to be using Ruby as a basis here, but then again, we're going to be looking at a lab with Node that is very different from Ruby, but it has the same kind of an approach, the same kind of uh, attack vector being used. Now here you'll see that we have a class called user and this user has certain attributes. So now you'll see that the attributes that are in there are email, password, admin, first name, and last name. Now this user obviously is going to sign up your system. So this is typically a user who's going to sign up to your system, but let's imagine that that user is signing up to the system, that user should not be able to set the admin parameter. Am I right? So the user should not be able to declare themselves as admin when they're signing up. That's obviously going to be a huge problem, a huge red flag and a massive authorization issue there if the user is able to sign up as an administrator. However, because our MVC framework, so basically a lot of our applications today are written in model view controller frameworks and they're written with ORN where you map an object or an internal object to a relation and you create a database record from that particular internal object. Now here to be using this kind of functionality is become very common and we see this functionality being extensively used by developers everywhere. So Java has it, ASP.NET has it, Python has it. Ruby on Rails is by default that kind of a framework. You see this in all languages. Everyone gives you an easy framework to be able to serialize your data and, you know, create a data record from it and dump it to the database. So let's look at the sign up functionality here. And this is the problem with the sign up functionality that you're going to see that the user is signed up as based on the parameters that come from the front end, which means that the developer is not really checking anything. The developer is not validating whether only these fields or these attributes are being set when the user is signing up. As a result, if the attacker is able to guess that there is a parameter called admin, and if that admin parameter is set to true, the, the attacker is now administrator privilege on that particular application. Because you see what's happening here is that the user is created based on all the parameters that just come from the front end or from the user side. And if those parameters are, or those attributes are directly correlated against the attributes that are in the class, which is admin, email, password, first name, last name, the user is created with all these parameters. And if the admin is set, the user now becomes an admin of that particular system. So all I have to do is send a request or a JSON parameter that looks like this. It says email, admin, password, admin, first name, last name. And if you see here, I've set the admin to true. And since I have guessed the parameter admin and I've set it to true because of the way my developer has written code, I've been able to escalate privileges, sign up as the administrator. And from that point on, I have admin privilege on that particular application, which can be a huge escalation of privileges. This is 
a huge escalation privileges. Now, this was made popular largely because GitHub was compromised with a very similar attack, with the same attack. In fact, it's called mass assignment. A security researcher identified this issue on GitHub. This was way back in 2013, where he was able to sign up and pass himself as the administrator and was able to become GitHub's administrator. Imagine becoming GitHub's administrator, having access to all those code bases and all the internal code bases of GitHub itself, which is a pretty huge escalation of privileges. So this was made popular by that. But then again, like I said, it works across different frameworks and languages. It's not specific to Ruby on Rails. It works with Java. It works with Node. You're going to see an example with Node itself. So you'll see that it's not specific to a language or a particular framework. So it happens wherever you largely have MVC frameworks or ORM tools, right? So this is MVC frameworks or ORM tools. ORMs are essentially libraries that allow you to translate your internal objects to database code, and then they would serialize that data into database records, so on and so forth. So it's very popular today because you don't have to know SQL. You just have to use ORMs and translate your internal objects, and your ORM would automatically serialize them into database records and store them in a database. It's very popular with a lot of modern applications and rightfully so. It's very easy to work with. So external data is serialized into internal objects and stored as database records. So when any external data comes in from the user, it's serialized into a internal object and stored as a database record. So if the developer does not check for which parameters are actually getting serialized or which parameters are not getting serialized, you will see that if the attacker is able to guess certain sensitive parameters like admin or can launch nuclear missiles, there is a parameter called can launch nuclear missiles and that sets to true, then that attacker signed up with the privilege can launch nuclear missiles and the attacker can obviously from that point on can launch those nuclear missiles. That's something that becomes a huge challenge with mass assignment. So with mass assignment, as you can very well imagine, what is the defense? The defense is pretty straightforward. You should not be just take blindly passing the parameters and serializing them into database records. You can do one of two things, right? One, you can either explicitly map out the fields you want to consume and serialize them and then dump them to the database, which is fine. Or certain frameworks also come with exclude capabilities where you are serializing a data set and that framework comes with, hey, exclude this particular field when you're serializing it, which means that exclude the admin field. Do not allow somebody to add the admin capability into that input and that, that get processed as a database record. So if it, even if the attacker uses the admin and sets that to true, that would be completely ignored because it's set to exclude or it's put in as a protection parameter that nobody can use or that particular user cannot use in that particular function. So this is essentially mass sign. And you will be surprised as to how many applications have this particular flaw. In our pen testing scenarios, we see this all the time. We see this very often simply because a lot of applications use ORMs and MVC style functionality and they serialize these data records. So when either when they're creating stuff or updating things or whatever it is, you will see that this attack can be harnessed, this attack vector can be harnessed to escalate privileges to a higher level user or higher level functionality available to a lower privileged user. So this is a pretty serious flaw. We're going to be looking at a demo of this pretty soon. We're going to be doing a lab on this particular mass assignment very soon with a very specific story in mind as well. Let's look at our lab on mass assignment. Now, this example is a fun example. I've always, in fact, we wrote this for an internal capture the flag contest at V45. And I thought we'll include that in a bunch of classes as well. So this is a corporate expense management application. This expense management application essentially allows users or employees of an organization to essentially submit expense records. So let's say you travel for a conference or something. Of course, none of us have done that in a while now, and I'm missing that. But let's say you travel somewhere on work and you incur some expenses on your card or your personal cash or whatever it is, you essentially submit your expense statement so that you can get reimbursed. So that's basically what this application is. So this is a Node.js API that does that. So it also has a front end and stuff like that, but let's not worry about the front end. We're focusing on API. Here. So we have this API that allows you to submit expense information and your project manager, who is obviously a higher privileged user, is allowed to approve it. So you submit, you as the employee, submit expense information, your project manager approves 
use that expense information and then you get paid. So basically that's the point. That's the application. Now, of course, as a malicious employee, what I want to do is I want to not only submit expense information, but I also want to approve my own expenses. That's the point here. So that's basically my mass assignment. I'm going to leverage mass assignment to do that. So let's get started with running the lab. And this is basically a Node.js application that has a MongoDB database in the back end. So I'm just waiting for the app to spin up. So we have this app that is running. So we have the Node.js app that is running. We have the databases that are running. Now let's log in as the user. So I'm going to log in as, as the employee. So this is my employee email is maya.williams and password is superman123. I'm going to log in. And once I log in, I'm going to get my typical token. So as always, I have my token. So you'll see that I have my JWT, the user type, the email, etc, etc. So I'm going to, as always, do a small little hack, which is essentially token. I'm going to export this, essentially copy this value here. So I have my token here. So if you look at this token, you will see that it clearly has some basic claims, nothing very fancy. You look at the claims, it's a simple application. So you'll see that it has an issued ad, it has an expiration, all of that stuff. And of course, it has a user claim. That's basically what it is. Now, as the user, I am going to get all my expenses. So let's say I've already inputted a bunch of my expenses into the system and I want to fetch my expense details. So I, I fetch my expense details. Dollar D, okay. It says, hey, you know what? You have two expense items in your expenses. And you'll see that this is clearly a MongoDB direct dump from MongoDB, which is also not a good thing. So you'll see that all the basic data from MongoDB is here. It's directly serialized from MongoDB and dumped uh, on JSON, which is ideally not something you should be doing because some of the fields you don't even want to show the user, right? So you'll see that both of these expense items are not approved, right? Is approved, is set to false. And by default, that's the status. Unless the project manager goes in and approves the expense, this is set to false. Now, Maya obviously wants to bypass the system and she wants to approve uh, an expense by herself. So what she's going to do is she's going to use the update expense. So the update expense capability is given to employees to be able to just update the value or update the name or the reason or something like that. Just some basic updates. But she discovers that she can do an update functionality and she can actually start tampering with fields that she's not supposed to tamper with. So let's see what she can do with the update expense functionality. So I'm going to start interacting with the update expense functionality. I'm going to, of course, use her token to do this. And I am going to make some changes. So aside from the amount and things like that, I'm going to tamper with this field. I'm going to tamper with a bunch of fields. I'm going to say amount is 30, merchant is this, name is this, is approved, true. I'm going to set the is approved value to true. And when I do that, you will see that clearly there is no access control. As a result, I am able to set the value here and I am able to get this approved. So which means that I can actually set, I can not only create my own expenses, but I can essentially bypass the authorization and set that expense to approved. And then obviously this is a pretty big financial fraud as far as you are concerned, because you can essentially generate expenses and start approving those expenses and that could create a huge issue. This is again, one of those examples that we took from a real world case. We were actually testing an expense management system and we saw that this was something that one could do with that system. And we actually created a use case and a lab story based on that. Now let's look at the code and see what's happening here. Now this is a Node.js app it's quite you know it's quite a detailed app it has the database code it has the controllers now most of the interesting stuff is in the controllers so that's where we're going to go and we're going to look at the expense controller that's where the expense related operations of my api are being managed so this is my expense controller now if you look at how i've implemented it so actually i have done object level access controller at least some kind of role based access control here you'll see that that's actually happening because every single time what i'm doing is i'm checking whether that user is a genuine user user and whether that user is able to do this, whether that user has the privileges to do this. So I've actually implemented some souped up access control here and I'm validating whether that's a real user, whether that user exists in the database. So if you see here, I'm checking whether it's a user and the user has the ability to create expenses. I'm actually doing all those things. This is all the right things that I'm doing. And you'll see that in most of these cases, it's pretty spot on. There's not much that has gone wrong here. But let's look at the errant API, which is the update expense function. And let's see what's wrong. So what we're doing is this is not the problem. The validation of the user and the token is not so much of an issue. The token is valid and the role valid. So that's what we're checking for. That's perfectly fine. However, 
we are essentially doing some a lazy bit of programming here where we're saying that hey you know what just find the id so you remember here what we're doing is just going back i'm just going to go back and forth between the code and the screen so we are saying that look get the expense id and find the expense id and whatever i'm passing in the request body updated so if i pass is if i'm able to guess that there is a attribute called is approved and i pass it in the request body and that sets to true it just updates the entry with that field with that attribute and that's the problem here. Most of the other stuff is not the issue, but this is really bad. And as a result, I have a mass assignment and I have an authorization bypass on my hand. If I had used the same logic that I've used elsewhere for this function. So let's see how I've done with the create expense. So let's look at the create. I have mapped the attributes specifically. So each element of the request body I have mapped against the attributes and then only consumed the data, right? So I mapped every single item and consumed the data that way. Here, I have not done that. Clearly, I was on a deadline of some sort and I didn't really care about it. And as a result, you see that I have a pretty huge gaping mass assignment authorization flaw on my hands. That's the issue with this application. So if I had either mapped it out specifically attribute by attribute, remember, I only wanted the user to be able to update two or three attributes, not the whole thing. So if I had said expense object, only two attributes or three attributes map it, that's fine. That would have worked. But since I did this, now if the user is able to guess these fields, values and remember guessing the field value is not that complicated because when i actually do a get request you actually get all the field values back so if the user is able to guess the field values you will see that this is very easy to get done right so that is basically the problem with this application so a few things when you are dealing with mass assignment one of the things you should keep in mind is especially when you're serializing data into the database especially new resources or updates of existing resources always attribute match explicitly match Map attributes to the request body that you are serializing. Even if you are using a direct serialization technique, exclude certain attributes from being serialized. So let's say you want to still use the, hey, you know what, I already have a serialization thing. I don't need to sit and do this kind of explicit field mapping. I don't want to do that. I just want to be able to use the serialization. That's fine but exclude. There are libraries that allow you to exclude. So in fact, most of your REST frameworks, any REST framework would allow you to exclude. So in fact, let me try and pull up some serializers. So if you already have like a serializer that you're using, just ignore the attributes that you don't want, the properties that you don't want, and you're good to go. So in an update function, you should definitely be ignoring the is approved or let's say the amount. Obviously, you don't want the amount to be changed as well. Ignore. Set it to ignore or explicitly consume the specific attributes that is also an approach that you can use so that is something that you can use as well if you like this sort of content you should consider liking this video and subscribing to the appsec engineer channel on youtube this will help notify you every single time we drop a new video on this channel